Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this first edition of Sales Boomerang University. Very excited to announce that we're going back to school in the spirit of just a little after Labor Day. It's September, football's back, and we're going to be firing up a global training series called Sales Boomerang University, starting with Sales Boomerang 101, 201, and 301 as well. We will be conducting these every single month on the first, second, and third Tuesday at 3.30 Eastern time moving forward. We wanted to bring everybody together and help have a, a common ground where we can exchange ideas, we can share knowledge, we'll have some special uh, invitees down the road. But for now, it's just going to be me. I'm your host and your professor, I suppose, Sales Boomerang University's own Spencer Schultz. I'm a training and adoption strategist with Sales Boomerang. So excited to have everyone here. Looks like we have people joining in. Please let me know where you are attending from throughout the country. I'm located in Baltimore, Maryland. Feel free to use the chat. Feel free to ask questions at any time if there's something you want me to go over in more detail. But ultimately, this is for you guys. And we're starting with the 101 series. We've got Eric from Gillette, Vince from Gilroy. Love to see it. Love to see it. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Diane from Tustin as well. Fantastic. Well, again, guys, I'm going to get it kicked off here in a second, but just wanted to have this High level 30,000 foot overview of what is Sales Boomerang, the basics, we'll go through our syllabus and things of that nature. So please let me know anything that you want me to cover in more detail or any questions that come to mind while we are getting started with Sales Boomerang. So without further ado, we're going to get into it, my friends. The first edition of the official Sales Boomerang University 101. And our goal here is, hey, how do I become a retention rock star? using Sales Boomerang as well as Mortgage Coach ultimately here. So what's our syllabus? What are we going to be learning about in this class? Well, what is Sales Boomerang? How can I use it to increase my borrower retention? How can I use a platform like this to ultimately, number one, help people? Number two, make some money. That's what we like to do. That's our, our two pillars as LOs. We also want to see, hey, how can we benefit our referral partners or strengthen our referral partner relationships utilizing Sales Boomerang and Mortgage Coach technology? We're going to be getting into all of it, guys. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Spencer Schultz, a training and adoption strategist with Sales Boomerang. I'm a former LO myself as a producer for a couple of years, got into the data and analytics side of things. And now I'm here trying to help people like yourself help borrowers and close loans. So we have merged together with Mortgage Coach. Um, we are very firm and steadfast in our belief that we don't want to leave any borrower behind. We want to make sure that every borrower who wants to be in a loan can be in one and make sure they're in the right loan as well every time they have a possibility to be. So very excited about our goals. So Sales Boomerang, uh, it, it, technically, if you're describing it or thinking of it, we are a borrower retention platform or a borrower intelligence system for the lending industry. So breaking that down even a little further, guys, what is a borrower retention? What does that do for me? We're going to notify you anytime someone within your database is ready to buy, sell, or refi. And we're going to define your database a little bit further here momentarily, guys. But ultimately, the goal is this. We want to show every possibility that a borrower could have. We want to show every time someone could strike. We want to make borrowers have a quick and easy ultimate experience when they are trying to decide the very confusing process of should I take out a loan today? Should I buy? Should I rent? All of those kinds of things. So again, we want to move, as the venerable Fergie would say, we want to move into 3008. Otherwise, we're 2000 and late. And we can say things like, oh, we'll take your database into the 21st century. Well, it's 2022. It's time to get with it or get lost, guys. So we don't want to be relying on random check-ins, birthday cards, anniversary cards, um, you know, all of those things, waiting for our referral partners to bring us business. We want to be proactive and ultimately able to have relevant insight to bring to a borrower into those conversations. With that, I wanted to go over a couple of fast facts here before we get into our, our actual alerts and our intelligence system itself. So on average, the number of mortgage transactions that the average mortgage consumer does in their lifetime is right around 11 transactions, somewhere between 10.7 and 11.6. So with that, number one, we want to help borrowers increase that number. Why not be able to execute 13, 14, 15 times every time there's a possibility or a way to accomplish a personal or financial goal for a borrower through taking action. Let's help them strike. Let's increase their confidence so that they can do things like establish wealth, put away money, pay for college, all of those kinds of goals. Number two, we want to help you as lenders and LOs retain the remainder of those mortgage transactions. Make money, help people. That's what we're here for, guys. 
So we want to be your borrower retention platform. Uh, we are capable of doing so. We want you to be proud of the capabilities. So within that, I want to define our database. What is our database? When that comes to mind, sure, it could be our previously funded deals. Or, hey, maybe we're, we're working on just leads. We buy lending tree leads, things like that. Okay, those are our forms of your database. But don't limit yourself in your idea there. These could be those who aren't qualified yet. They're not credit qualified. They were denied for credit. What our referral partners bring us it could also be people that are currently in processing and underwriting that we're working with and, and helping them through those possibilities or seeing when they're shopping, doing things like that. And of course, hey, adopt a database from your referral partner, from you know someone who may have left the lender and left some records behind or left the industry. Uh, then of course, it is your past customers and your leads. All of those encompass your entire database. That is everything that you should be utilizing. That is everyone that you will be serving as an LO. And here's what those databases look like. A lot of times, you know, we close people in 2020, you know, rates were super low. Okay. You know, we, we close one loan, we kind of move on to find more business. We have a lot of question marks. Ultimately, this is what your referral partners databases look like too. And this is what Zillow and Rocket Mortgage and some of the bigger, you know, uh, corporations have, you know, they'll see things like, okay, who's shopping? Who has improved their credit? Who's been able to, you know, maybe list their home for sale recently? And here's what Sales Boomerang and Mortgage Coach can provide. We not only provide you with the insight of who is active, who does have equity, who has you know, those signals and those insights, but ultimately the strategy. What should you say? What should you do? What should the borrower do? That's how we can use Mortgage Coach, which we'll get into a little bit later, to help leverage strategies and increase a borrower's confidence in their decision-making ultimately. So we're able to see who within our database is going to buy, sell, or refi as well as break down their options and show them what their strategy is. We are not simply, you know, Rocket or Zillow that's just mass sending email marketing and campaigns and kind of hoping that whatever bites on the line, we're going to be able to reel in. We're helping borrowers make smart decisions, not just for today, but also their future using these technologies. Here's another story I wanted to get into uh, really quickly before we dive into these alerts themselves, but this is a story of Alice. And I like to refer to Alice's as we want to have a pipeline full of Alice's. So thinking of those 11 mortgage transactions on average, this is a story of a real borrower we got to talk to. I'm based out of Baltimore. Like I said, this is a borrower that uh, the lender, the LO had told us, I've, I've been doing sales boomerang since the 90s, since the 80s. I have people that I've you know done 10 plus transactions with. So we said, could we talk to some of those any chance? He said, yeah, absolutely. So we got to meet with Alice uh, and she told us our story. And the big, the big takeaway for me was this. We asked her, why did you end up staying with this LO? You know, the, we'll call him John this entire time. And she said, well, simply put, I got paired with them through a, a realtor back in, you know, 1990. And, you know, by the time you know, I told him my goals, told him a couple of things, he asked a lot of questions, tried to find out, you know, where I was going next, thought about my next kind of situation and how to help me accomplish them. But she said, you know, I let him know, okay, we were looking to upsize, you know, I'm, I'm pregnant, we're starting a family, things like that. But she said, by the time anyone ever mentioned oh, rates are really low, you could refinance, or oh, you have a lot of equity that you could use advantage or use to your advantage. That LO, we'll call him John, had already told her that was a possibility. He was already planning the next loan and looking at her future as a borrower and as a homeowner, not just for that current loan. So that way he was able to retain her business. You can do the math, make a lot of money here and help someone. So with that, we want a pipeline full of Alice's. On our pipeline and our database, are consistent with the borrower's personal and financial goals, that's how we can take our own success back from the market or from other lenders. We don't need to worry about, oh, well, in 2022, rates are really high and you know uh, loan volume's down and we need to push this product. Well, no, because Alice might need to move regardless of what the rate is, or Alice might need a debt consolidation regardless of what's happening in X, Y, or Z. You know, Someone might need to move to take care of a family member, whatever the transaction is, when we're consistent and in tune with our borrower's goals, they're going to keep coming back and we're going to help them accomplish them. So I think of one Alice, you know, a 20-year relationship, 30-year relationship with 5, 10, maybe 15 mortgage transactions. How many leads would you trade for that? How many, you know, emails would you trade for that? Uh, a lot. So when we have 50 Alices, we have a pipeline that's consistent. We're able to keep being independent of the market, independent of other lenders, and work in tune with those borrowers. So with that, I wanted to dive into our alerts here, guys. Uh, I, want, I don't want you to be overwhelmed, but uh, I wanted to break these down into, into three sections, really. We've got our non-credit alerts, 
casting a wide net, you know, just one piece of relevant information to have a conversation with the borrower. We have our core credit alerts as well as our prescriptive scenarios. Now, I don't want you to pigeonhole any of these alerts in your mind. So you see, for instance, we have a cash out alert on the right hand side under the prescriptive scenarios. Well, I don't want us to say, okay, there's a cash out alert. That means that alert can only be for a cash out. That means that alert, you know, is no good for purchase. That alert is no good for, you know, anything other than having that debt conversation or that uh, cash out refinance conversation. That's not the case, guys. All these alerts are providing is a relevant insight to have a conversation with the borrower with relevant information. So we have Diane here. Let's say Diane, uh, if you're still with me, let's say you and I are old buddies, old pals going back 30 years. Uh, let's say we went to middle school together. And let's say I happen to see my friend Eric, who's also in the chat here. Uh, and I say, okay, well, Diane, let's say you and I go out and get happy hour, uh, you know, once a month, every month or two, we like to go catch up, you know, have a margarita, eat some nachos, we're friends. And my friend Eric, I, I happen to tell you, Diane, you know, he mentioned to me, okay, well, I have a lot of equity. These lenders keep contacting me. I'm not really sure if I'm making the right decision. I'm kind of scared to do anything. Uh, apparently I have, you know, $100,000 in equity. I've just never really used any of it before. If I told you just as a friend, if I said, oh, Diane, you know, my friend Eric has a ton of equity. He's really unsure what to do. Someone please chime in and feel free to chime in in the chat or anything of the sort. If I told you that information, my friend has a lot of equity. What would you do? I'll see if anybody chimes in in the chat, but ultimately, you know, it's just a piece of information you're being given to have a relevant conversation. The first thing you should do, simply call Eric, say, hey, heard you had some equity, congratulations. Wanted to go over your options and ask you a couple questions. Just wanna pick up the phone. And let's say we have a conversation about equity and Eric ends up mentioning, well, I don't really wanna take my equity out because the wife and kids and I were, were kind of planning to you know, move to this area to a better school district or we're planning on adding another to the family and wanted to you know, have another bedroom. Okay, well, we can go down that purchase conversation. We can just ask questions and be a mortgage consultant. We don't have to be a rate jockey. We don't have to get stuck to that alert. We need to be able to be open and versatile to whatever that borrower's goals are. So ultimately, guys, these alerts, again, are just a doorway to a conversation and it doesn't have to stay exactly with that alert. With that, I wanted to get into the alerts themselves. So again, our tier one alerts, these are our cheapest ones. These are the ones that are just showing you one piece of non-credit information so that you can have an insight with a, a borrower and go ultimately ask them a couple questions. Uh, these are a way to really have proactive conversations a lot of times, as opposed to being reactive or defensive. So with, with that being said, we can have our equity watch here. We're able to go on the offensive, reach out to, to Joe Smith here. You can see on the right-hand side, the hypothetical borrower and say, hey, Joe, congratulations. I, I saw you had some equity. Uh, we're not really breaking any news by telling you in today's market that borrowers have equity. The average American consumer's equity is up somewhere between 60 to $65,000, depending on which study you read from this time last year. But with that, we're able to define how much has Joe's equity improved from closing. Let's say he closed at you know 80% uh, LTV and now he's at 70. Okay, 10% improvement. Awesome, we can identify those. We can also identify what his home value is. We work with three of the top AVMs in the country, including Black Knight. So Sales Boomerang has created our own proprietary aggregate. So we're able to understand, okay, conservatively, we like to be uh, conservatively estimating these as opposed to overzealously. That way, you don't we don't promise you 650 and you get back 575. You're disappointed. The borrower's disappointed. Instead, okay, we want to try to be a little conservative. That way, hey, maybe it comes back 550 when you're expecting 525. So ultimately, you know who has equity that has improved from their previous position. And in other words, their situation has changed a little bit. And you're able to see home values that are, de are desirable to you. So then you can call up Joe, send an email, send a text campaign, which we have full automated drip campaigns for and say, hey, saw you had a really great equity position. Congratulations. Just wanted to go over your options. Make sure that your equity is working for you. You can say things like, hey, my borrower retention program, Sales Boomerang is your borrower retention program, told me that uh, you know we were doing an annual free mortgage health review and saw you were in a great position. So I just wanted to review your options, ask a couple questions. You know, I like to think of this as kind of the farming alert. You plant a seed, you give it a little water, a little sunshine. Uh, these aren't always going to be a super quick play. You're not going to convert every one of these within 60 days into a funded deal. 
Uh, but you're able to say, okay, well, here's how you can use your equity to create more equity, or here's how you can consolidate debt, or here's how you could, you know, buy up or buy down, whatever it is, you plant the seed. And uh, then eventually you're able to stay consistent, set an, a, an alert or a reminder for yourself in your CRM, and then go hold yourself accountable and, and follow up. And hey, maybe Joe does want to get a, a deck put on before, you know, next spring, uh, but he's busy right now. So he says to call him in, you know, late October. So follow up, set a reminder for yourself. Equity Watch is a great way to have proactive conversations with borrowers. The next is our listing alert, guys. And this is a great opportunity to help your referral partner network understand where their opportunities lie as well. So with this listing alert, we're able to see every for sale by owner. We're also able to see every zip code in the country. And within 24 to 48 hours of these alerts getting posted anywhere on Al Gore's World Wide Web, we can ultimately uh, show that listing. And the first person you should call when you get this listing alert, it's not the borrower. Call the listing agent, look it up on Zillow, look it up on Redfin, look it up on Realtor. Say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, congratulations. Just all you got Joe Smith's home for sale uh, listed. Just wanted to check in and, and say congratulations, let you know that I was gonna be giving him a call. We worked together back in 2019. What's the realtor going to say back or the referral partner? Oh, thank you so much, Spencer. I appreciate it. Uh, by the way, are you friends with Joe? How did you know that I got this listing? Oh, well, I have this system called Sales Boomerang. It lets me know anytime someone's going to buy, sell, or refi. 95% of the time, what we hear back is that realtors say, how do I get access to that? How do I get that information? Um, and it's simple. You have to work with a Sales Boomerang LO, and that's you. So, you're able to call, establish a little bit of trust, maybe establish a new or a previous relationship you can bank on with that referral partner. And then you can call up Joe Smith and say, hey, Joe, this is Spencer at SB Lender. Just wanted to get in touch with you. I was speaking with your agent. Uh, wanted to get you pre-approved or you know, show your buying power or make sure you were getting the lowest closing costs. And hey, sometimes they'll be pre-approved, sometimes they won't. Um, but hey, this is an at bat that you weren't going to get a chance to speak with a referral partner, show them the great technology that you have in your at your disposal. And guess what? You can also uh, use these to enhance your relationship with a referral partner. Uh, so ultimately, I, I have an example. A couple of weeks ago, I was doing a refresher training down in Orlando with a lender partner of ours and the branch owner, owner I was talking about this with and in, in front of their group. And he said, hey, I've got an idea. Are you guys sick and tired of going to you know open houses on the weekend? Yes. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you have that realtor write down the name, address and contact information, email or, or phone number, so that way we can get in touch with them. And then sales boomerang can monitor everyone who comes in that open house for both you and that referral partner. All of the LOs wanted to do that. And hey, now you don't have to go to that open house ultimately on the weekend. So we can use these alerts to uh, monitor our referral partners database and let them know any uh, public information that does become available so that we can, you know, flip the script, show the value. We're the ones providing the value. Any of these alerts, we can say, oh, well, you know, this person had equity or this person, you know, uh, was shopping, things like that. And go share that with our referral partners and, and make sure that you're enhancing that relationship. The next one, guys, rate watch. It's simple. We're going to let you know, we, we do integrate into optimal blues indices. We also are capable of changing these for FHA, conventional jumbo, everything. Uh, as quickly as you want, USDA as well. So if you want to input these manually, you can. Um, and we're not going to be showing you uh, an interest rate where someone is going to be, uh, you know, oh, we're offering five, eight, seven, five right now. I'm not going to show you five, nine, you know, six. We need to see actionable buffers. We need to see a delta that, okay, if there's six, five or above, six, eight or above, you know, seven ultimately is what we want to see. So that way it's an actionable alert where someone could benefit from it. These obviously will ease even out and see more opportunities from these as rates decrease, hopefully next year. But these opportunities are still abound. You're able to have that easy conversation with the borrower. Hey, we can save you some money monthly. See where that conversation goes. The next one here, my slide got a little warped, but ultimately we're able to see everyone in our database who is eligible for reverse mortgage based on their age, their home value, as well as their equity. So we can identify those possibilities and you can help with retirement planning. That takes us to our tier two alerts, my friends. These ones are our credit alerts. These ones are uh, directly in tune with TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian's models. We're not getting these from Credit Karma or some sort of newfangled app. These are coming directly from the bureaus. So we're going to show you when a borrower is shopping or has improved their credit, and now you can do business. These are more defensive that allow you to get at bats with borrowers that are probably going to go elsewhere. And they are a little bit higher in price because we know they're credit qualified, and we're getting more insight into a borrower's actions. 
The first one, mortgage inquiry, it's simple. Others offer this. We have the best one. Uh, simply, when your borrower has their credit pulled, buy another lender for a mortgage-related transaction, not for an auto loan, not for a credit card, not for a personal loan, for a mortgage transaction. We will alert you within 24 to 48 hours. On top of that, they are credit qualified. If they're not to your standard of what you need to see, then we're not going to alert you on it. So with that being said, we also segment these into four different codes. You can see an example on the right-hand side, Joe Smith description, mortgage credit pulled, inquiry was made for a home equity loan or a line of credit. So there's one. The next one is for likely purchase activity. The third one is first time home buyer. And then finally, a general inquiry, something that slips between the cracks of those where we weren't able to identify it through the credit bureaus ultimately. So with that, uh, we will show you a credit tier. That way we never do a hard pull. It won't show up on someone's Experian consumer report for this alert or anything like that. Uh, so with that being said, if Joe Smith is a 727, then we'll know he's a tier two. We'll see tier two. If he's a 650, we'll see tier four. But again, if you get these alerts, the borrower is credit qualified to your lender's necessities ultimately. So with that, again, this is an at bat with a borrower that uh, is going somewhere else. They have been shopping. And with that, I want to share that, you know, a lot of the time it's out of fear or a lot of the time it's because they were solicited to or walked into their bank and saw they were offered this or they have a ton of debt and needed to act or, you know, Rocket Mortgage sent some sort of mass, you know, offer promo to them. This is your opportunity to call, reestablish that relationship and help provide insight as a mortgage professional and a mortgage advisor. So you can call, you can say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, I saw that you had your credit pulled by another lender. I wanted to make sure it was you. At SB Lender, we have a free fraud protection program and wanted to make sure it was you. They say it was awesome, fantastic. Well, hey, I saw you were you know, looking, to, uh, it's, it says that it was made for a home equity loan or a line of credit. Is that accurate? It is, okay. Well, hey, I would love to have a chat with you, ask you a couple of questions, uh, make sure that you know, you're, you're getting the lowest closing costs and gonna get the best deal to accomplish your goals. We do an annual free mortgage health review as a part of our borrower retention program. You can say things like that. Or, hey, I'd love to make sure that you know, you're gonna make yourself recession-proof with that transaction uh, and ask him a couple of questions. And just try and reopen that communication. Uh, you're not going to close all of these or else you'd be retired on the beach sipping pina coladas in three years. Uh, but these are an at bat with a borrower that is shopping, is credit qualified, and probably needs some advice, needs some help. Uh, the, you will get turned down, of course. You know, we, we don't bat 100% or else we'd uh, be in the Hall of Fame rather quickly. But with this, you know, some of those opportunities might be someone who just was acting out of fear, you know, weren't quite sure. They, they decided to have their credit pulled. and now you're the one that can go give them that advice. That's like a hanging curveball over the middle of the plate. Other times, maybe that lender waited a little while. That lender's got them in a good situation. Maybe they are offering something better than you have. And maybe it's you know too late. Maybe it's a 100 mile an hour fastball more so over the outer part of the plate on the outside black. And you, know, you kind of have to close your eyes and take a swing. It's going to be tough to hit it. Maybe you're able to get a poke on it. But either way, it's an at bat. It's a, a possibility for someone who is active and credit qualified for you to retain them. You can use texting scripts. Email scripts, I will say best practices are using video and mortgage coach TCAs through texting. Um, those are, are, you know, no one wants to hear a voicemail anymore or, or act that way. People don't read their emails from lenders all that much because they get solicited so often. But hey, make the call because you can. Shoot the email because you can. Make the text because you can. Why not? It takes five seconds. We have a ton of scripting as well as uh, webinar content from what other top lenders are doing with these. So we have tons and tons and tons of different ideas and scripting to help you work through these situations. The next one here, guys, EPO, early payoff alert. We're going to let you know when a recently funded deal in the last 180 days has had their credit pulled by another lender. Same deal as mortgage inquiry, but this one is someone who, you know, you just closed. Maybe you have to, you know, pay something back or will incur a fine, whatever it is. Uh, you know, you get that dreaded invoice three days before funding. Your borrower is going elsewhere. It's too late. Not much you can do. With this, it's an opportunity to make sure that your borrower is not being overpromised and going to get underdelivered to. You're also able to work to uh, be able to retain their business and make sure that they are doing the smartest thing for themselves, getting the lowest closing costs. Uh, so as you know, especially as rates do come back down next year, as we project, there's going to be a lot of these. You know, someone's going to be able to buy a home, then four and a half, five months later you know, drop their interest rate and reduce their monthly payment. So these are a high priority and you need to stay sharp on these. Credit improvement, we're going to be able to simply show you, hey, 
someone had a 595 and you needed to be 620, instead of turning them away, you can say, you know, I have to turn you down, but you work on these three things, improve your, you know, utilization, these inquiries will come off in a couple months, and you know, uh, whatever it is, then I'm going to give you a call, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, the day you become credit qualified. So with that, um, you're going to be able to say, hey, Joe Smith, you know, you work on these three things, I'll give you a call, then you call back, you show accountability, you show that you care, congratulate them, hey, are you still looking for that place in, you know, Tempe, or that place in, you know, Scottsdale? Okay, awesome. Well, hey, let's get you pre-approved, show your buying power. So credit improvements a great way. A lot of those are purchase activity. Somewhere around 71% of those who were rejected for uh, credit in 2020 became credit qualified in 2021, and it was for purchase transactions. So uh, it was about 36% of those overall became credit qualified in 2021, and 71% of those was for purchase activity. So, hey, that's what we're looking for in this market. There you go. There's an opportunity. With that, let's say you close someone in 2020 that was credit qualified. Let's say they were a, you know, a 660. And now they're a 720. They got a better job. Their DTI is better. Their, revol their utilization is better. And they've lowered their revolving debt. Awesome. Well, they could be offered a different loan product and a different conversation. You see somebody who's 740 and above, you can talk to them about maybe, you know, an investment property or a uh, different situation. So another great way to proactively reach out to borrowers and have a relevant conversation, show value and show that you're still there and able to help them. So with that, um, we're going to yield on the alerts for today for this 101 session. Did want to get into Mortgage Coach here for a little bit and just share the capabilities of Mortgage Coach. Uh, you are able to show different loan options side by side and easy to digest and read fashion. It's easy to break down. You can show cost and savings, not just monthly, but over 60 months, over 180 months. You're also able to integrate these alerts directly into Mortgage Coach and you can add a personalized video to it narrating these TCA presentations. As you can see here in the cell phone example, you can see that the LO made a video of themselves explaining what's being shown, um, you know, as opposed to working in, in a 1989 itemized fee worksheet that looks like you know, someone ordering an entire warehouse full of light bulbs and industrial wear. You can use this easy to digest Mortgage Coach TCA. Here we're breaking down a debt consolidation and you can show the monthly savings um, you know, how long it would take to get to freedom. Here's an example where it takes 11 years as opposed to 30 years. Currently, it takes 18 years. Your eyes can be directed to the monthly savings, which are going to be $1,126. You're able to highlight different pieces of information. You're able to show savings over 60 months and how that could impact someone's net worth over the next 15 years. Able to do that all in an easy to break down and read manner that is colored, graphed, appeals to different styles of learners. And hey, here's another example looking at that debt consolidation over 18 years, how much interest you're paid, a short-term scenario versus a long-term scenario, considering credit card debt and things like that. So we integrate directly with Mortgage Coach. It's a great way to have a contact strategy with a borrower. Like I said, phone, text, and email. Hit all three of them because, hey, why wouldn't you? Uh, the name of the game is Speed to Lead. Again, we have full email and drip campaigns available in our resource hub, which I'm going to drop here in the chat, support.salesboomerang.com. Again, that's support.salesboomerang.com. Anyone can use it. And I'm going to pull up our resource up here, guys, and take you in there really quickly so that you can learn more information about what I've talked about today, as well as everything that we offer. Okay, and here is the link, my friends. I just put that in the chat. I encourage you to join along with me, support.salesboomerang.com. And now... Here's what that looks like. I'm going to log out. I go to this site, in the bottom left-hand corner of support.salesboomerang.com, our resource hub. You can click new to sales boomerang. I want to sign up. Awesome. Right here, put your full name and spencer at sblender.com. So I enter my name and my work email that I work for with my lender. And then I hit sign up. That's going to shoot an email to my inbox. And then I can sign in. Anyone can use this. You don't have to currently have Sales Boomerang. A chimpanzee with a laptop could use this. So once we're in, my friends, here's the front page. You can search anything you want to see. So credit improvement, he was telling me about on that Sales Boomerang University 101. Here it is. What's in it? What triggers it? How often is it triggered? Okay, here's the credit tiers he was talking about. All of that information. Here's related articles. Like, hey, here's a cash out alert. We'll get into that in the 201. Awesome. Uh, then on the front page again, 
hey, here's loan officer resources for you guys. Here's product overviews for everything we have. Here's best practices and strategies, for instance. Hey, how can I find purchase opportunities with Sales Boomerang? Here's other Sales Boomerang universities, scripting like phone scripts for if you're a credit union or email scripts for our core alerts that we went over, all sorts of information. So utilize that. I will also say utilize Mortgage Coach's YouTube and we'll go to Mortgage Coach here in YouTube. Awesome. Mortgage Coach has 19,000 subscribers, 2,000 videos that you can choose from. Hey, here, for instance, is how top producers are using Mortgage Coach. Here's guys like Jeremy Forcier or ladies like Denise Donahue, actual top 100 producing LOs that are using these every single day. Uh, here's Tuesday interviews. Here's ones from two weeks ago. Acquiring and deepening your realtor relationships by using Sales Boomerang and Mortgage Coach. Awesome. All sorts of content. If you like listening to podcasts and webinars, things of that nature, then those are for you. With that being said, hey, here's a cadence. Here's what a mortgage inquiry might look like. I want to call, text, and email on that first day. We need to be cognizant of that. And hey, maybe uh, this one is a, a quicker play. A mortgage inquiry alert is probably dead after about five days if they're shopping with another lender versus an equity alert. I don't need to contact them 10 times in five days and contact them once a week. It's a, you know, something that's a threshold versus an action. So with that, we can help with those. And hey, always be considering how to schedule the next best loan. If you're closing a loan, has nothing to do with sales boomerang, got it organically, uh, and you're able to say, hey, we don't want to just you know close one loan. We want to help you throughout your journey. We do have a borrower retention program. Make sure to take down my phone number. What's the best way to get in touch with you? Also, hey, we're going to let you know every time you can take advantage of the market and uh, you have a possibility to accomplish one of your goals. So we care, you know, at XYZ Lender about the next loan as well. And hey, here's what we project is going to happen in 18 months. We think in 18 months, you'll be able to do a rate and term, lower your monthly payment, get into a better rate and, you know, be a lot happier. As they say, marry the house, you know, date the rate. So with that, here's my three takeaways, guys. These are very simple. If you're a top producer, you'll roll your eyes. If you're getting developed, here's how you're going to use Sales Boomerang in the simplest way to ultimately uh, do three things. But number one, we're going to add two funded deals to our pipeline doing this. We're going to be able to enhance our relationships with our referral partners and set ourselves up for success next year. The first one, if you don't call, if you don't send the text, if you don't send the email, if you don't follow up, how are you going to close the loan? You're not. If you're receiving these alerts, whether it's through your CRM, we integrate with over 25 CRMs, or if you're using our email system, you won't close the loan if you don't follow up on the alert. Plain and simple, guys. The next one, if you don't ask a borrower, you won't know and neither will they. They won't know that they have the possibility to maybe utilize their equity to consolidate debt or to you know, invest in investment property or you know, to do a buy-down strategy. They won't know if you don't ask and you won't know if they're interested. If you don't ask questions, be curious. Try to be interested in finding out about that borrower's goals as opposed to trying to be interesting. Always want to ask questions pivot. You know, if they're not interested in purchase activity, hey, make sure that they understand how they could use their equity or vice versa. Final thing here, guys, very simple, get closure out of every alert and conversation. I want to phrase this in, in the sense of greens, yellows, and reds. Let's say I have, a, I have a mortgage inquiry alert like we went over. I call the borrower. They're interested. They want to go through. I end up, you know, pulling their credit or, you know, taking an application or, or maybe I'm supposed to call them back to do so tomorrow. Awesome. That's a green. I want to update my notes in my CRM. I want to create a task and a reminder for myself. I also want to make sure that anything I need to follow up with, I have written down, take detailed notes as always. That's a green. I'm moving forward. Awesome. That one's hopefully going in my immediate pipeline. Okay. Number two, we've got our yellows. I call about an equity alert. The borrower tells me, oh, you know, Spencer, we just, we were away all summer at grandma and grandpa's with the kids. Uh, it's a really busy time. Kids just got back in school. You know, little Johnny's sick. Little Jane's got soccer practice. And, you know, me and the wife are very busy, but we did really want to get X, Y, or Z done before next spring. Is there any way you could give me a call maybe before the holidays? Absolutely. I'll give you a call the first week of November. How does that sound? Good. Okay, cool. Go in my CRM, take notes, set a reminder, create a task. I'm detailed. I'm organized. I'll remember about this borrower. And then I go follow up in early November. That's a yellow, you know, have some, some good positive takeaways, not moving forward immediately, but hey, I'm ready to go have another conversation with them. 
Then I've got my reds. Hey, we're not going to close all of them. I was a junior LO and used to get, you know, pardon my French, but, you know, told to, to uh, give in the middle finger, we'll say through the phone many times. Hey, they're not interested. They're going with the other lender. They didn't enjoy their experience or, you know, they, they just hung up on you, whatever it is. Okay. You didn't hear back from them. You did a full email and texting campaign. That's fine. Awesome. That's a red. I'm going to move on. I'm going to get closure out of it. I'm not going to let it sit and just stew for a while. I want to move on. I want to you know, continue the process. So greens, yellows, and reds, that's how you will add one to two applications a week and two funded deals to your pipeline in the next 30 days using Sales Boomerang. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it, my friends. I'm going to go check the chat here and make sure that uh, there's anything. If there's anything you want me to cover that in more detail that I haven't, please let me know. But uh, we will be doing these as the first iteration. We'll be doing these every first Tuesday of the month. So next month, that'll be the first Tuesday, whenever that falls at 3.30 Eastern. Next week, we have Sales Boomerang 201. We'll be talking about our prescriptive scenarios and some more advanced strategies. The following week will be 301. And we'll be talking about, hey, things like how to really re enhance your relationship with referral partners, how we can have them sign up, all of those. So this is recorded. These will be recurring monthly. Thank you so much for joining us. Mahalo right back at you, Yobi. I appreciate your time. Go help some people. Go close some loans and you'll get an A plus in Sales Boomerang University. Thank you so much, everyone.